You're listening to NFRN The Drive, your place for NFRN, NASCAR, and motorsport news. Hello again, everybody. Colin Denton here, back again for another episode of NFRN The Drive. Thank you all for tuning in once again, and apologies for missing the episode on our last stream, which was the NFRN Champions League race, which means we've got a triple header of highlights to get into. Let's send you right over there now to take a look at the action that we've seen over the past few races. We'll start off with the race at Calder Park in the Elite Cup Series. Dominic Carranza on the pole, Johnny Gardner on the outside. Julio Caesar in early trouble as he makes contact with Adam Mundinger, hits the fence very hard. And then we'd see a bit of controversy. Now it starts off with Carranza losing a little bit of ground in these tight corners. Johnny Gardner gets the run and then makes a little contact with Carranza heading into the next kink. He hits the wall, Johnny Gardner pulls away. Probably a lot of controversy involved in that, but no penalty given. Carranza then gets bumped by William Brock further down that straight and into Tyler Markell. Loses a little bit of a solid day right there, and he'll be end ending up in a crash later on. Stuart Gratton, an Australian native, getting turned by Robert Harrison. In fact, Eric Monaco just behind him gets turned by Nick Smith right at the same point of the racetrack. This would be the trouble corner throughout the entire race. As we'd see, Markell get turned right here by Kenny Knox once again in an accident. Runs up against the wall, and then right here, we'll see Jet Krause a bigger turn into the wall. Bruno de Barros gets him the big damage. He slides down the racetrack, gets hit by Stephen Willey, and then slammed into by Connor Mays. Uh, Markel collected as well as Mundinger. We'll see Harrison try to get around and then hit Markel at the last second. Johnny Gardner, though, would be the eventual winner of this race, and he'll be locked into the playoffs. Here's the rest of the finishing order from this race. Noah Cars Rambo and Mitchell Mark with some great top five days. Noah Kim, a part-timer, gets up there as well. Stuart Gryden came back from his spin and finished seventh place. Brad Silver with a nice points day puts him second in the standings. While the Elite Cup Series was in Australia, the Amateur Cup Series was in Canada. Clint McComb took the pole in his debut start for the series. Justin Roadback blows a piston and has to go to the pits. He'll be out of the race early. Dwayne Calloway coming out of his pit stall runs into the pole sitter McComb and gets held up as he was leading the race. Chris Harley got by as well as much of the field. But in fact, he would have to come back down pit lane with not enough gas in the tank as well as Colin Lindsay. Several drivers getting that fate, but Chris Harley had the gas to make it to the end, takes the checkered flag and wins his second race of the year. Robert Harrison and Connor Mays in a tight points battle for a playoff spot. Both get up there in the top three. AJ Jones and Noah Kim not doing too bad for themselves either. Noah Kim finishing top five in both events on this race weekend. Taylor the Pig also with a great top ten after not being able to do so in the truck series to date. And the third of four rounds for the NFR and Champions League took place in Calder Park as well. Just one race after the League Cup Series race there. Stephen Willey able to nudge over Noah Carr's into the outside line and take the lead on the first lap. Nick, Nick Smith experienced some mechanical problems, gets nudged by Eric Van Arsdale, takes a slide in that first kink as he would have to go to the pits early. Then later on, Noah Carr is seemingly having some steering issues as he ends up getting collected by NASCAR Fan 19, both trying to head into a turn, and then he'll make contact with John Arndt going down the hill. Eventually, it would be Stephen Willey who's able to grab a victory this season after a terrible run in the Elite Cup Series. Colin Lindsay would be the eventual second place runner, followed by Reese Butcher, Rampage, and Johnny Gardner, the winner at Calder Park in the Elite Cup Series. Now we did have one incident in the Elite Cup Series that led to a probation. Jack Krause got into Aiden Shepard coming off pit lane, first turning him into the wall, but then coming back and then sliding Shepard across the track. The NFRN saw this as very aggressive driving. They have handed down the 34 team, a two race probation for that contact. It lasts through race number 11 in the Elite Cup Series. Kraus cannot have any aggressive incident during the probation, which takes place throughout Van Zant and bump draft in Super Speedway. Incidental contact or contact that is not his fault will not apply to this probation. And since our last episode of The Drive, we've had another edition of Amateur Cup Series Power Rankings come out. Some of the big gainers and losers in those, Sparky was able to go up 19 spots after a subpar start to the season, but then a win at 8-Bowl 
A.J. Jones has really turned up his performances and been running really consistently. He goes up 16 uh, spots to ninth. Craig Martin and Al Callaway also up double digits. Going downward, though, Justin Roadback had a solid start to the season, as well as Griffin Lynn and Jack Freeman. They've all gone down at least 20 spots in the rankings, all the way down to the 30s. They make up three of those uh, seven spots in that range. Eric Van Arsdale also going down 12 spots to 20th. And now we turn our attention to the NASCAR world. The biggest news over the past two weeks is that Furniture Row Racing is going to be closing its doors at the end of the 2018 season. The 2017 championship team, driven by Martin Truex Jr., the first championship for the driver and the team, they will be ceasing their operations after this year, despite being in the playoffs and possibly being championship contenders once again. Now, this has been an ongoing story throughout the season. We've talked about Martin Truex Jr. being in contract negotiations since about July. That became a kind of topic because we knew that Martin Truex Jr. was going to be a free agent were he not to sign a contract by the end of this year. Well, at the same time, we found out that 5-Hour Energy, a sponsor that had been on his car about half the time as a primary sponsor, would be leaving the sport entirely. That left a huge sponsorship gap on the team that they had to fill. And at a certain point, they had to come to getting that sponsor and being able to fill out their car. But once you get into September, that really messes up, messes up a lot of budgets. When you get into big companies, they like to all set their budgets for the upcoming fiscal year by about October. And when you're getting into this point of the season of the year, teams are really going to be struggling to find a major corporation that wants to put up the money that's going to fund a big racing team and one that's going to be a championship contender. That requires a lot of money. And obviously, when 5-Hour Energy left, that left a huge gap on Furniture Row Racing and owner Bar Barney Vischer. Now, one of the other things that's kind of come up here and there, never really been talked about in detail, is that it's possible that Joe Gibbs Racing, which is the technical alliance supplier for Furniture Row Racing, might have wanted to get a bigger buck out of the team that they were supporting. Because obviously, when a team that is supporting another gets beat by that other team, that's going to be a big loss for the team that's providing its materials, pit crew members. It's just a big mess for the team that's trying to be the supportive group. So it's been rumored that the team was going to bump up the payment that was necessary for Furniture Row Racing to maintain that alliance. And obviously, Joe Gibbs is never going to admit to doing that, or rather just the team in general, whoever the management is, in terms of making those deals. But at some point, it also came to a point where Barney Visser, realizing that he's not going to have a competitive team if he doesn't maintain this alliance, which he probably can't pay for now because he doesn't have the sponsorship deal backing him, it just became a huge mess for him that I think he just had to close down his operation and now he has the title to say that he finally got coming up as a small team just about a dozen or so years ago. He finally made it to the very top, got what he was going for in the end, and now is coming to a close. A very uh, disheartening situation, but obviously one that had to be made, uh, a decision that had to be made by Visser, especially after... He has been undergoing health scares, and now he is going to uh, probably sell off the team in some capacity. Obviously, don't want to just hold on to those materials, but also a charter will be up for grabs. We will see who will end up being the owner of that charter, which could have a lot of value because of the high performance that it has had over the past few years. Now, that does also bring up the interesting situation in Martin Trex Jr., needing a ride. The big rumor that came out pretty much immediately after the announcement of the team closing is that he was going to be going over to Joe Gibbs Racing and replacing Daniel Suarez in the 19 car. That has not been confirmed official, but it has been the heavy rumor, and that has set off a lot of shuffling with silly season rumors that we are going to see what comes to fruition 
uh, at some point. But we are going to take a look at some of the free agents that have come up. And uh, some of these guys, we don't know that they're going to be free agents. Uh, some of them are just assumed until we know that they are going to be signed back onto their team or not. Some of these drivers include Martin Truex Jr. Obviously, we talked about him. Kurt Busch looking like he might be going to a different team. Chip Ganassi Racing has been a heavy rumor as well, but he did not confirm if that was the case. Ryan Newman just announced yesterday that he would not be returning to Richard Childress Racing. And so we know that he is going to be looking for a new ride. Jamie McMurray, uh, he is not going to be back in his ride. Neither is Trevor Bain. Matt DiBenedetto announced on his own terms that he's leaving Go Fast Racing. We're also looking at the statuses of Michael McDowell, David Reagan, Landon Castle, Corey LeJoy, Jeffrey Earnhardt, Reed Sorensen. We know that there's a few cars as well that we don't know who might be a driver for them, especially since they're uh, really uh, rotating drivers in and out. That includes the cars of Premium Motorsports as well as Rick Ware Racing. Also happening in the NASCAR world, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series playoffs just started up today at Las Vegas. 16 drivers took to the track looking for a chance at a championship. We've seen the big three be very dominant throughout the season. And now we're looking for maybe the fourth driver to join them. Maybe one of them gets upset. We never know. There's always a chance that someone falters when it gets down to crunch time. But with this new system that came into place last year with stage points, playoff points that carry over. Who knows if they're ever going to make it out and make it all the way to Homestead. We are going to take a look at the drivers that are in right now, and I'm going to give my own picks on who I think is going to get eliminated in each round. Now, keep in mind, I am recording this ahead of the Las Vegas race, so I do not know what happened today that might impact how these standings actually turn out. This is a opinion based on just before these playoffs happening. So completely unbiased based on what this race is going, what this race has done, even though I have not actually seen it yet because it is currently Saturday night recording this. So we take a look at the drivers that I believe are going to make it through each round. I'll start from the bottom, go up. So these are not ordered in the way that I believe that they're going to finish at the end of the season. This is just uh, ordered based on their current ranking and then how I believe they're going to be eliminated later on. So we'll start with the round of 16. Alex Bowman, Jimmy Johnson, 200 drivers. I was very tempted to at least give Jimmy Johnson a second chance, get him into the round of 12 at least. But in the end, I just do not believe that he has more speed than the rest of the field. It just seems like Hendrick Motorsports is lagging. They are obviously picking it up just a little bit. Chase Elliott got that win at Watkins Glen. Chevrolet just seems like it's getting a little bit faster, finally, as they get into the playoffs. But still, Jimmy Johnson does not seem like the driver that the team is going to be looking toward to get an eighth championship. I've also included in this list Eric Almarola. He has really exceeded my expectations just in general. I did not believe that he was going to be someone... That was going to be a huge threat. And I don't believe that he's going to make it out in the, out of this round of 16. Unfortunately, just because of the rest of the talent in this field. But based on where he progressed from Richard Petty Motorsports. All the way over to Stuart Haas Racing in his first year. Getting into the playoffs. Very, very over my expectations for this whole season. Austin Dillon, unfortunately. Chevrolet just doesn't look up to speed. Richard Childers Racing doesn't look up to speed. Dylan really just got in there with his Daytona 500 win, and I don't believe he's going to get very far. We go up to the round of 12. Now, I believe in this round, we're going to see uh, Ryan Blaney get out. Got all three Penske cars in the playoffs, which was a very good task for this team. But unfortunately, Blaney just hasn't had a bunch of luck this year, and I think that he's going to kind of lose it getting into the second round. Eric Jones, great win at Daytona. Looked really strong. He could potentially be someone who could get into the round of eight, I believe. But I just think those other guys that I've listed there might have a better shot. Putting Jones where he is in the round of 12 with the possibility that I think he could advance a little bit further. Denny Hamlin kind of in that same boat. 
but I believe that Jones might have the better shot. He just seems a little bit faster than Hamlin throughout this year, and especially as of late, heading into the playoffs, even though Hamlin looked really close at the end of Indy. Kurt Busch also put in there. Great win at uh, Bristol. Really showed his speed there. Just don't think he's going to beat all these top eight. Let's move over to the round of eight on the left side of the board. I got a pair of Chevrolets and I got a pair of Penske drivers. Kyle Larson, he has been pretty much the best Chevy driver out there on the course. Chase Elliott has kind of been the guy that's kind of gotten up there as of lately and competed with them. So I believe both these guys are going to be the biggest threats for Chevrolet in this playoff run. But unfortunately, just a little bit lagging based on all these other factors in the field. Brad Keselowski, two wins heading into these playoffs. Crown Jewel events. I'm just really on the edge of putting them in that fourth spot. The reason I believe Clint Boyer might have that edge, just Stuart Haas Racing looks really fast. They have the ability to put two cars in that championship four, and I believe Toyota does too in the JGR Furniture Row camp. So we're going to stick Keselowski and Logano at five and uh, in the round of eight, rather. And I believe Keselowski would be the better fit in the championship four if Boyer doesn't become that. I obviously put Boyer in my final four, as well as the big three. Martin Truex Jr. has been the guy that everyone's talked about. Will he be able to get into the championship four just based on this distraction of the team shutting down? And I just believe that the points that they have, the playoff points that they've gotten, Throughout the season, I don't think they're going to lose that ground based on the rounds leading up to it. I think you're going to be able to maintain a gap and get into the championship four. Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, they seem like they should be just locks at this point. As far as a championship pick goes, I'm going to say, just based on one race playoff showdown, I believe that Kevin Harvick's going to be the driver that's going to be hoisting the trophy. Reasoning for that, he's been one of the most consistent drivers on this circuit for as long as he's been running here. He only has one win on this track, but so does Kyle Busch. He has a lot more top fives, more top tens. Nine compared to three, 15 compared to six. Harvick's just been running a lot better on this course. Now to Harvick's credit, four more races run on this course than Busch, but still, Harvick's been putting up the numbers no matter what car he's driving, and he's got a very solid car underneath him, he could be a big threat to win this championship, and that is who I think is going to win the championship at the end of the year. So as we get ready to go racing at Van Zandt, we do want to repeat some of the important information on the NFRN that you need to know. The 24-hour race is still open for signups. Obviously, you do need to be a driver within the league, but that can always be accomplished by signing up part-time for trucks. That has to be done before you choose to sign up in the 24-hour race, which can be done in two ways. Uh, either you form a team with other drivers, you need to know the name and the email of those drivers to make that team official, which comes in three to five drivers, or you can sign yourself up to be on the waiting list, and I will auto-assign teams once the race is ready to go. Obviously, you can still search for a team while you're on that wait list. That is just a, a big backup plan, basically, for those that aren't able to find a team for their own. And for all the information you want to know right away, including stream times and practice speeds, you can go and join our Discord, which is down in the description in coordination with the ASCA League and the ASCA Copperhead Amateur Series, which I am the commentator of. So, Van Zant is on its way. Another very fast racetrack, which is going to produce two exciting races today in the Amateur and Elite Cup Series. Who will take home the victories and who will put themselves into the playoffs? We will see in just a few moments. So for NFRN and RVN, my name is Colin Denton. Good night and good riddance. Luna, Luna.